Hey guys, you might have guessed this from the intro, but the DIY CNC mill is finally completed and operational. I'd also like to apologize for this video being long overdue. I've spent a lot of time building and improving the machine over the past few months, and filming and editing videos has been pushed aside. The upside of this is of course that the mill has been finished and all sorts of peripherals have been added to make using the mill more ergonomic and safe. The mill itself was already assembled and tested, but it has now been moved to the garage and installed to the housing. This housing has a frame made of aluminium profile, larger 3060 profiles have been used for the structural parts and smaller 3030 and 2020 profiles for supporting the housing. The housing itself is made from sheet metal and together with acrylic side panels it forms a cover for the machine. This cover keeps the chips and cutting fluids inside the machine and on the other hand it helps to protect the user. The housing has double doors that open to the front. On the original design I had a single lift door, but having two smaller regular doors turned out to be way more ergonomic while using the machine. A workstation with little desk space has also been added to the side of the housing. Having some table space to use the PC and house tools and drawings really makes it a lot more comfortable operating the mill. Now when it comes to the mill itself, I've also made some improvements. Water cooling system for the spindle has been added. All the linear components and vital parts have been covered. Cables have been properly routed. Work lights have been added and lots of little things have been fixed. I've also spent some time trimming the axes of the machine to travel perpendicular to each other. Once the axes were square, I proceeded to do the same operation to the spindle. Having the spindle perpendicular to the XY plane of the machine is essential for good surface finish and accurate parts. Just recently I also faced the T-slot table and the flatness of the table is now down to a couple hundredths of a millimeter. Moving on from the hardware side of things to the software world. Using the machine requires basically two programs, Fusion 360 for CAD and CAM and Mark 4 for controlling the mill. I'm very familiar with other CAD and CAM programs, so picking up Fusion 360 was easy. The program is surprisingly capable and intuitive to use. Having little pop-ups explaining different features and settings within the software is also really helpful. Mark 4 on the other hand has required some trial and error. The basic use isn't too bad, but there are a few things I've learned the hard way. Now I mentioned accuracy earlier. From the very beginning, I was interested in the capability of machining dimensionally accurate parts. I was trying to design the machine to be rigid enough to cut such pieces from aluminium. As soon as I got the mill working, I designed and machined a couple of test pieces. I grabbed these parts with me and headed to the Zeiss coordinate measuring machine. This measuring method is totally overkill, but since I've got the option, I figured I might take it. The test piece is a plate that has both surfaces faced and two holes bored into it. The measurement shows that the flatness of the plate is around 4 hundredths of a millimeter, and the profile shows that the plate is actually bowed, having a low spot in the middle. This is probably due to the plate bending during clamping and then later on returning to its shape after being faced. Regardless of the cost, I consider 400 to be reasonable over a 120 by 100 mm surface. There are also two holes that have a nominal diameter of 8.2 mm and distance of 40 mm. As you can see from the measurement report, these holes are actually undersized. These holes were finished with a rather high feed operation, so I figured either the tool or the Z-axis assembly has some deflection in it. I think some of this error could be fixed with either a spring pass or a lighter finishing operation. The distance between the center points of the holes is only off by a couple of hundredths of a millimeter, which is a good sign. Now I would summarize these measurements to be promising. I'm not really happy with them yet, but I believe a lot of these things can be fixed with better machining operations and cam programs. I'm planning on taking more measurements along the way and I'm hoping I'm seeing these small errors go away. Now continuing from here on, I've got a few projects going on which will help me get familiar with the machine. I'm also still improving the mill and I'm planning on adding things like control panel in the near future. I'm planning on using this mill in the future for different kinds of hobby projects and I'll take you guys with me on this learning journey. Thank you for watching and if you are interested in this kind of content, please consider subscribing and liking the video. See you guys soon.